Howdy. How's all my crafty peeps out there today? I have been busier than a one-armed paper hanger. <laughs> Y'all would not believe all the crafts and things that I've got going. I, man, oh man. I thought I was busy and I was working. I retired and got five times busier. I wanted to give you a little bit of uh, I don't know if it's a review or just showing you what I'm doing with it. Yeah. I got some of these Lindy's Plat Magicals that um, Shelly Lynn talked about over on Crafting Mamas. And um, they are, it's a watercolor paint, but I guess you can use other stuff with them. And it says, let's see if I can find it here on the tube where it says, yeah. And I believe it must have been on the jar where it says you can mix them with water or other things. And, you know, they put this little teeny tiny print on there like old people are supposed to be able to read that. And let me get my, my big eye here so I can see what it says. It says add powder to water or your favorite medium to create custom paint, paste, or gels. And they had two different sets of this available, and I don't remember what the other one was called. This one is called Caribbean Cruise. And when I ordered it, I thought, okay, Caribbean Cruise, eh, that's probably a, a fairly muted tone. And, um, well, I'll tell you, it's not exactly a muted tone. I guess if you went extremely light with it, you could probably get more of a muted tone with it. Uh, I've been watercoloring with it is what I've been doing, but I... I couldn't sleep last night, so I got up and I was fiddling around. I wanted to find a little something to calm my mind down. And so I did some watercolor painting with these colors. Just, um, you know, random, kind of a floral, wild, bizarre thing. This will get uh, eventually tore up and uh, decoupaged up for background for ATCs or for some project. I don't know. It hasn't told me exactly what it wants to be yet, but they're pretty bright. I don't know if it's showing up on camera. The, this lighting in here may not be showing it as bright as what it is, but it is pretty bold. And so today I was finishing up some paper that I had made yesterday in a homemade paper vat. And, um, I decided that I would emboss it. And so this is my homemade paper and I vanilla scented this and I embossed it. This is, now it's gonna look like it's cracked there, but it's not, this is two layers thick. It's folded over with the edge kind of ripped out on, on the one side of it there. And then the other side was deckled and that's folded in. And that's why that looks cracked. It's supposed to look that way. And I ran this uh, through the platinum spellbinder and put some embossing on it and emboss both sides and that cool this one i did circles i was thinking of shelly and i saw the circles and <laughs> i said well i'll just have to do some some circles for shelly on here but uh that's homemade paper you can do anything with it that you can any other kind of paper and this was um the well, I want to call it beige. It's kind of an off-white color. You get two different colors of paper in the packing paper in the boxes. There's a brown and there's a lighter tan looking color. And this was the tan color and I didn't add anything to it. Um, I just tore it up, put it through the blender with some water, poured me a big old vat full of it. And um, I made paper all day. And vanilla scented everything that I did. I made envelopes. I made eight and a half by 11s, I made five by sevens, I made business cards, um, I made embellishments, hearts and stars and flowers and, um, oh my goodness, don't even remember what all, I filled the molds up with pulp. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I did 30 blenders full of pulp yesterday, give you any idea. <laughs> I had that vat full of pulp. But anyway, I digress. I got it all ironed and flattened out nice. And then I said, well, I'm going to take a couple of them five by sevens. I'm going to fold them over and put them through the embosser and see what we end up with. And I think that just looks cool. Um, so 
let's see here. I'm going to mix up a little bit of this just to do a little painting just to show you what this stuff does. And I'm telling you, this you just want to use a dab. I mean, a dibby, dibby, dibby dab. You don't want to use hardly any of it. Um, <laughs> Because this is bold, bold stuff. Let's see. I want to, I don't see my favorite paintbrush up there. I'll use this and this is a good one. And you don't want to put, but just a dab. Now you watching me here. Can, am I getting this on camera enough that you can see this? I got a little lid off of a, a jar here, a little plastic lid. And I'm just dipping that paintbrush in just enough to put on that little teeny tiny tip of the paintbrush. And then I'm going to put that down here in this lid. Now, depending upon how much you're going to paint, you're going to paint the side of the house. Yeah, you're going to need a bunch of it. But I'm going to do that about half as much again on there, just the tiniest bit. Because this stuff is some bold paint. And, well, let's see. I'll just use my mister on that. And let's see if I can get my lid off of here. I'll get my mister to work. Look at that. Man, that is some bold, bold paint. I'm going to stir that all up really, really good. Get that in there. I mean, this stuff, it's, it's like mica is what it reminds me of. And now... I'm going to paint these circles with this and show you what it does. Now, you could probably add some more water to that and tone it down if you wanted it toned down any. But now, this is this paper's not had any sealer on it. This is just, you know, from the vat and dried, ironed out. So, it's going to soak up. If you didn't want it to soak up that much, you might try putting uh, some uh, paper sealer on it. Now, like I said, I got this from uh, Create and Craft, and I put the uh, URL there in the description of the video if you want to pull it up and take a look at the things that they have. It was on sale when I bought it about a week ago. I don't know if it's still on sale now or not. But you can keep your eye out for it, put it on your wish list or whatever on your other sites that you go to and, uh, you know, watch for a good sale on it. I wanted to, to give it a try and see what it would do. And I found out that, boy, this is some bold paint. And that a little jar of that is going to last a long time. You'd have to do a lot of painting to use that up. But so you can do you can paint your backgrounds up with this, do different colors for different circles, you know, make it as wild and bizarre as you want it to look like. Put a background there on the background part of it. You can uh, then cut it up to put on your serendipity paper. You can put it on your ATC cards and build over top of it. It's a nice texture since it's embossed. Um, so, you know. The sky's the limit on the things that you can do with it. But see, look at that. that that's enough to do this whole doggone card, probably both, both sides of it. Well, just a little bit that I put in there. And just like any other watercolor paint, before you add any other color, you want to dry this. You can use the heat gun on it to dry it. Uh, or just let it sit until it dries and come back and then, you know, go in with your other colors. If um, if you go to add in one color on top of another color, you're going to get mud. So this gives you an idea of what this paint will do. Wow. I mean, I, I'm impressed with it. And I've been painting with paints long enough to know that when you start out with paint, you just want a smidge of it just to test it to see what's going to happen. Uh, otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of your product. So I just put just a little dib out and um, 
I was glad that I hadn't put out any more than I did because it, it just goes a long way. But yeah, this uh, the thing that I did last night here, this was watercolor paint or I mean watercolor paper that I put it on and it didn't bleed through the back of it. Um, you know, it uh, it did a good job there on that. Now with this, it's going to bleed through the back because this is just going to soak it up. And if your the paint that you have in your container dries out a little bit, the water evaporates out of it before you get it used up, then you can always reactivate it with a little more water. With it being watercolor paint, I don't know what it would do if you added, you know, gel or some of them other things, maybe alcohol or or anything to it. If that would tone it down any or make it more vibrant. I don't know how you could get it a whole lot more vibrant than what it is, but you know, if you're looking for a really bold paint, this fits the bill. Now it's not quite as bold on here, I guess, as it would be if it was on white paper like I painted on last night. Uh, paper's muting it out a little bit and soaking a lot of it up. But it's still pretty doggone bold. I mean, if you're looking for a little light baby blue, this is not it. They call this particular color in this um, Caribbean blue. It has let's see, what is that called? Mango Mania, Pineapple Paradise, Hibiscus Rose, and Luscious Lime. Five colors in a pack of it. And I think it was like $17 and something for a five pack. And I thought, wow, you know, that's a little better than $3 a jar for that stuff. It better go a long way. Oh, my goodness. I had no idea. I mean, you know, for what it, <laughs> for how little bit you use to make your paint, it is an excellent deal. But now that was on sale too. It's a little higher than that normally. But shoot, a little bit of that goes a long, 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 long way. And I discovered also last night that you can also mix the paints to come up with other colors. Um, I don't want to do it on paper, you know, trying to mix them on the paper itself because it, it tends to get muddy when you do that. But you can mix them in the palette and see what you come up with. If you don't like them in the palette, then obviously you're not going to use them on your project. But you can mix them up a little bit. I mean, the yellows and the blues uh, all obviously make green, you know, just like going back to to your childhood school days with, uh, with your colors. But that gives you an idea there on what that blue will do. And I was looking around here to see, uh, let me get another lid. I don't want to waste this paint. So I uh, will get another lid and mix up another color here. I've got a sack full of water bottle lids. I save all my water bottle lids because they make the coolest little palettes for doing this kind of stuff. And I'll need another brush. Let's see if this one's in good enough shape. I try to keep my tools in real good shape and I uh, don't let them you know, be dirty and 
harden up on me. But every once in a while, I'll have one that'll be a little wonky. That one's pretty good, pretty good shape. I used to do my own nails. I haven't been doing my own nails for quite a while now, but I used to do my own nails. And so I had a lot of these little detail brushes and I did a lot of artwork on my fingernails. And <laughs> a lot of times you get that uh, acrylic in your brushes. Man, oh man, that is a bear to get out if you don't get it right away. Now I lowered that was probably about three times more than I needed right there. Dust in the bottom of that bottle top. But it'll keep. If I don't use it all, which I'm sure I won't, Lord have mercy. Now this is the hibiscus rose, they call this color. I'd call it blood red, what I'd call it, but hey. <laughs> and it does have a tendency to stain your hands up some too. All right. Use a different brush on this one. We'll come in and go around this and you see what it looks like. It's almost a maroon looking color. Even with this little fine brush, this, this paper is so porous that it just slurps it right up. And I do not profess to be a painter. I enjoy painting. I've never had an art class a day in my life. My mother would not allow it when I was a kid as bad as I wanted to take art. So I'm sure to anybody that really does a lot of painting that this looks extremely uh, rudimentary and elementary painting. But I enjoy it. And, you know, I'm the only one I really have to please after all. So, it's not like this is going to go into an art exhibit. This is, uh, this is going to be background on a project eventually. Or it might go in my journal. Who knows what I'm liable to do. I don't even know what I'm liable to do. And who knows if I'll do the whole thing in watercolors, you know. I might come in with some acrylic paint and do something, too. Just whatever mood strikes me at the moment. I'm trying to use a real easy brush on them edges because as you can see on this one, how it just it started soaking out into the the other part, the background part. And I'm not sure that I want that now. But as my water is evaporating out of my little lid there, my paint's getting darker. So I believe before we get it so dark that it turned to, to mud, <laughs> we'll put a little more water to that. Bring it up to them little sprockets there a little bit. Okay. 
this might be some interesting paint to uh, use if you wanted to uh, dye laces and stuff with too. It just occurred to me. I got a lace order in from AliExpress today. And I was thinking about um, probably need to tea dye a little bit of that or or use some um, some Tim Holtz distress oxide on it or something to uh, darken a little bit of it up because it's an awful big piece of it. I know I'll be using that on several projects, so I could probably divide it out and dye it in a couple different colors. I might try a little bit of this kind of paint on it and see what happens. Feel free to leave me comments on my my videos and share my videos around so other people get to see them. And if you're not subscribed, I welcome you to subscribe to the channel. I do a live show now every week, Monday nights at eight o'clock Eastern time. Um, Michelle Scott is my um, posse. <laughs> she she's my girl. Uh, helps me run interference for the chat room there while I'm doing stuff to know if there's any questions that I can answer for anybody. I've got a, a journal going that uh, it's going to be an eclectic journal. It's not going to be one for just one particular thing. You know, I hear, hear folks talk about their junk journals and their flip journals and their scrapbook journals and their journal journals where they put down all their personal thoughts and all this. Mine's just going to be a memory journal. Uh, it's going to be a journal about my life and things that I enjoy and things that I have enjoyed and things that I've been through. And um, it's going to have a lot of Alice in Wonderland in it because I am an Alice in Wonderland a holic. Um, <laughs> I, I always have been, even as a little kid. I loved Alice in Wonderland. And I think it's the escape, you know, from reality that um, really intrigued me about Alice and her adventures and the characters that she met, the interesting characters. And I think I could relate to some of the problems that she had there at the Queen of Hearts and the, the cards and, and all that, you know, as a kid going to school. I think every kid has those kind of issues with other kids and teachers that they don't get along with. And I related to Alice. But there, you get, have an idea. Um, some, some of the... Uh, Caribbean blue and the hibiscus rose color and what they do and um, so that, that kind of shows off the Lindy's Platt Magicals paints and that's the uh, that's a little tube they come in and they stack up right in this little tube like so and they got a little lid that goes on there, keeps them, keeps them all nice and compact on your desk or in your paint cupboard. And uh, I guess you can also get them, it says here on the side, www.lindysstampinggang.com. And it says, Lord, I need to go get some glasses, what I need to do. It says, uh, fabulously versatile from painting to coloring various uh, mediums, great for mixed media. So there you have the story on that. Before I get off of here, I will do a little bragging, I guess. I mean, it's my channel. I can brag if I want to, huh? Um, let's see what they do with it. Oh, here it is. Right in front of my face. The stack of paper. I'll get this out of the way because I don't want to get that all over. All the work that I did here. But uh, like I said, I did five by sevens. And I did uh, 
these little ones, I think those are three by threes. I did uh, some of these. You can fold them up to make envelopes out of them. And then you, I've got these different sizes of these envelopes, blanks. I've got the bigger ones. I did some botanicals in the eight and a half by 11. That's rose petals from Little Baby Roses. Delphiniums on that one. Um, this one, I did the uh, angel wing flowers. Then I took some um, silver leaf. I did three sheets with silver leaf. Now that's, and it's on both sides of them. Just sprinkled it on for a little effect. I did gold leaf. I did bronze leaf. And I think I've already buried the other ones that I did. I did a bunch of embellishments um, that I thought I'd probably end up using in the journal. And I, I've got stuff still in the molds drying that I molded up for more greeting cards. So that gives you an idea. And I scented it all with vanilla. Oh, it smells absolutely heavenly. Heavenly, heavenly, heavenly. So I have been a busy, busy camper. Gives you an idea of this paper. And the uh, next batch I do, I'm probably going to do in brown paper. I don't know what color I'll scent it. Um, I don't know what exactly I'll do with it either. You know, if I'll um, do more embossing, I think the embossing is pretty cool. Um, I might put some cotton in it since it's brown, you know, to liven it up a little bit. I've got cotton liner that I can put in it. Uh, trying to think of what all else I've got in my bag of tricks. I might even put some fiber to it because I've got, um, Tons and tons and tons of fiber, whether it's yarn or roving or uh, novelty pieces of fiber. I'm not sure. I'll dwell on that a day or two before I fill the vat back up again and, and do more. I may do more botanicals as well. But uh, I, I needed to, to show off my paper. And look at those beautiful deckled edges. Oh, my goodness. That, just, I tell you, you know, Michelle's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> that, that's how I am about my homemade paper. And it's nice and, and crisp, although it is very bendable. You can fold it, you can bend it. And it's, you know, it's not like cardstock, it's just regular paper. And uh, you can print on it, you can draw on it, you can paint on it. You can do anything with it that you can do on any other piece of paper. It, it's uh, some neat stuff. So I'll be playing a little bit more with that in the next few days. And who knows what I'm liable to put on the camera next. I may do some weaving. I've got some weaving projects that are screaming at me that they want to come off the loom. And they can't come off until I get them done. So this gives you uh, a clue as to how doggone busy I am. I spent part of the day in the garden today gathering maters. I got maters put up. Um, probably be up doing that most of the night and, uh, <laughs> there is just never a dull moment around hair. Y'all have a good evening and, uh, you know, drop me some comments. Let me know what you think about the paint and, um, uh, what you think about my shows on. I'm sure I'll be on here before Monday, but I will look forward to seeing everybody in the chat room Monday night at eight o'clock. Bye.